What's going on everybody? I'm wearing a hat, don't really know why, just kind of wanted to. So, this is our last episode of Little Known Bible Stories, and uh, our first story is called A Marriage of Hope. So, uh, hey, why don't we start? <laughs> Alright, this story is found in the book of Hosea, chapters 1, 2, and 3, spans three chapters. Now you see, there was a prophet named Hosea. He lived in the nation of Israel. Now you see, God spoke to Hosea and told Hosea to marry a wife that was a prostitute, which is a woman that, well, ask your parents because it's not really appropriate, but basically mates with men for money. And uh, yeah, so Hosea did exactly what the Lord told him to. He said, marry a prostitute. So he married a woman named Gomer, who was a prostitute. So he was like, wow, that's pretty sad. So anyway, they had some kids. And uh, let's look at what happened. So their first kid was named Jezreel, which was a boy. because God And God told Hosea to name him Jezreel because God was going to defeat the people of Israel in the city of Jezreel. Their second kid was a girl. And God told Hosea to name her Lo Ruhamah, which means in Hebrew, no mercy, because God would have no more mercy on his rebellious people. And then they had a third kid named Lo Ami, and he was a boy. And God told Hosea, name him Lo Ami, which means not my people in Hebrew, because the people of Israel would no longer be God's people, and he would no longer be their God, because they sinned so much. But the story doesn't just end with Hosea and Gomer having some three weird kids. Basically, what happened was, you see, Hosea was a good man, a godly man. He got his messages straight from God. But Gomer, just like God said, was a prostitute. And she was doing all kinds of things. And she was always cheating on Hosea. And he was heartbroken. And it was very sad. But you might ask, why on earth did God tell Hosea to marry her? Well, we'll get to that later. But after a while, after she kept cheating on Hosea, one of her lovers ended up selling her as a slave, as you can see here. She was ended up sold as a slave, and she was being auctioned off. But Hosea still loved her and still decided to stay with her, even though she had caused him so much pain in his family. So, while she was being auctioned off, Hosea decided to be the greatest bidder, and he bought her back for 15 pieces of silver, which was a lot of silver coins, a homer of barley, and a half homer of barley, which equals a lot of money in today's standards. And Hosea bought her back, and he said, you will no longer be for another man, but you will be mine. And that is a, a pretty incredible love story that Hosea was willing to be that faithful to his wife, even though she had cheated on him so much. I'm way ahead of you. You're saying, what's the lesson? The lesson in this one is very sweet. You see, look at Hosea. I mean, God told him to marry a prostitute, which was Gomer, for a reason. What was the reason? God wanted Hosea to feel what he was feeling. God had espoused the people of Israel to himself like his wife, so to speak. They were supposed to be in a covenant relationship with him and fulfilling God's promise and being faithful to him by worshiping him and serving him. But they had cheated on God, spiritually speaking, by going to all types of sins and, and following the devil's path and, and worshiping devils and doing wicked things. Things and 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 forgetting God and this is exactly what Hosea what Gomer did to Hosea and God was showing Hosea this is what I feel like when the people of Israel do this to me so through Hosea's three children God showed the people of Israel you will be punished God also showed his wonderful love because God was saying look Hosea you got to stick and look at what Hosea did he stuck to his wife when she was being auctioned off after all the times that she cheated on him he could have said you know what serves you right you were so mean to me you caused me so much pain but he didn't do that he went and bought her and he said you're not going to be for another man you're going to be for me he spent all that money to buy her and God was showing the people of Israel and us today an incredible lesson even though we walk away from God so much even though we sin so much God will punish us. There is no question. A lot of people say God won't punish you. That is not true. God hates sin. It's breaking his law. And if we decide to be adamant against him, he will punish. But even like Gomer was constantly unfaithful to Hosea in the same way. And, and he still loved her and still wanted her back in the same way. The Lord Jesus Christ is looking for us like a good shepherd looks for the lost sheep. And he will always love us and always wants us to come back to him. A beautiful story of God's faithfulness portrayed in the story of Hosea and Gomer. And now for our last story, Dark Angel Arms.
Now you see the background story. Uh, dude, can you stop? Why? It's creepy. No. Yes! Okay, man? Okay, fine. Ugh. There we go. So anyway, the background story of this story, Dark Angel Armies, is... Remember the Apostle John in Mean Church a couple episodes back? Well, he was a disciple of Jesus. He was preaching the gospel throughout, you know, the world. But a Roman emperor had him arrested and sentenced to an island in Greece called Patmos, okay? Oh, you're wondering where Greece is. We got to do this geography thing again, man. Oh, my goodness. See, here's a globe because the world ain't flat. I like some people who try to tell you that. Anyway, oh, whoops, it fell down. Well, that wouldn't be good for the world to fall down. Anyways, Greece is right about... Whoa, it's right there, my dudes. Wait, my finger's too big. It's right there. Gotta cut my fingernails. But anyway, Greece... So anyway, the Apostle John was put on a small island in Greece called Patmos, and he was banished there to live the rest of his life. And, yeah. John was on the island of Patmos. He saw some insane things. God gave him visions, which are dreams in the daytime, pretty much, of the future and of things that were going to happen. He saw incredible things. But we're only going to look at one of those things today. A very creepy thing. John saw a huge bottomless pit open, and so much smoke came out of this bottomless pit that the sun and the sky was darkened. And out of the smoke, he saw all of these locusts, which are basically grasshoppers, come out. But these grasshoppers were not your ordinary grasshoppers, as you can clearly see. They had the teeth of a lion, they had the face of a man, they had crowns of gold on their heads, they had iron breastplates, they had the hair of a woman, they had the body of a horse, they were like horses prepared for battle, they had tails like scorpions which with which they could inflict pain, and they had wings that buzzed so loud it sounded like a huge army of chariots was coming. This was insanity. And they were ordered by the angels to hurt and torture human beings for five months straight. And even though human beings tried to die from the torture, they wouldn't be able to. And these locusts had a king over them named Abaddon, which means destruction in Greek. And he was also known as Apollyon, which means destruction in Greek. Actually, Abaddon means destruction in Hebrew. My bad, my dudes. Get it? My bad. Abaddon. Anyway, <clears throat> um, you see, Abaddon means destruction in Hebrew and Apollyon means destruction in Greek. So this was the devil, probably, who was their king, the king of these locust demons sent to torture mankind for five months. After this, John saw a huge army of 200 million people come out of the river Euphrates. And these guys were unlike anything you've ever seen. They were riding on horses, but these horses had the faces of lions and their tails were actually snakes, as you can see. And the people riding on these horses had breastplates of fire. And the mouths of the lions were able to breathe fire and smoke and sulfur. And they went and they destroyed one third of the entire planet Earth. Okay, that was insanity. Sounds like something out of an anime. Horror movie, kind of. Anyways, what on earth is going on, my man? What is the lesson? Well, you see, at the end of time, God is going to send these demons to torture people because of their evil ways. And you, you see, what, look at what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. He died for us, but people reject it. You might think God's really mean but in because he's doing this. But in reality, the reason why he's doing this is because people want their sin. And God is saying, you want your sin? Well, I'm going to let you see where your sinful ways actually lead. He said, I'm going to let you see what sinful ways actually do to you. So God will release these demons to torture people because of their evil, because they've cursed God and because they've done all these things. The, the huge army and the, the demon locusts are going to destroy people and kill them because of God's anger on this world and all of its evil ways. Even just look at the world now, it's so evil. So this is God's tool of punishing the world along with many other things. So here's the bottom line. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't not, do not throw away God's love. Look at the amazing thing he did for us and turn to him and don't suffer this and God will save you from this hour of pain that is going to come on the earth. And more importantly, he'll save you from hell. So do not reject him and you will not be a part of this you will escape it it will happen it will come but you will be able to escape it if you trust in the savior so thank you for watching our series we had a lot of fun and i'm gonna see you all later